The mother of all motor racing mast starts, 69 cars on the grid, heading for Cops Corner at Silverstone at the beginning of the 2020 six-hour relay race. Among them, five military teams, two each from the Army and RAF, and one from the Royal Navy Royal Marines. This year's race, very different. Fewer cars with only a maximum of four per team, and the strictest of rules to keep them COVID safe. We've ensured that we have one driver uh, for, for one car, one support crew with that individual. Everyone inside the garage is masked. Uh, everyone in the pit lane is masked. And uh, obviously we just make sure that the hand sanitization stations and the cleanliness and the basic uh, adherence to social distancing is, 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 is there. And everyone's being compliant to it, which they are because uh, the national governing body and the motor club that organize this uh, find you points and as well time on your team if you are not COVID safe. It's been a year to forget for military motorsport. The coronavirus meaning there's been no competition for any of the teams. After months of hard work, they were given the green light last month in time for this race. The RAF with two teams here, Spitfire and Hurricane, in honour of the Battle of Britain 80th anniversary, showing off their latest innovation in the paddock, their own service bubble. So all the necessary work on the cars before and during the race could be done away from the trackside garages. We're running it very different to how we'd run it in the past where normally we'd all be piled into the garage and we'd be operating and engineering in the same place. So we're about a quarter of a mile away from the pit lane. Um, we put extra kit to, to give better situational awareness in the garage for the managers down there. So during the race I'll be, I'll be managing the Hurricane team and, and, and Darren Burris will be managing the Spitfire team. Darren and I are connected uh, by radio. We're connected to the uh, to the engineers up at this end, and we're also uh, we've flooded the cars with radios as well. Because there's been no forces championship this year, all the teams were using this event to give drivers who'd never raced the Burkett but who had enough track experience the chance to shine. Leading the Navy's challenge, Chief Marine Engineer Gareth Sterling Moss in his open top Mazda MX-5, hoping against hope for a dry start to the race. The two Army teams had cars ranging in power from Tom Sykes's BMW 330 and the trusty Peugeot 206s driven by Mark Saunders and Matty Taylor to Richie Palmer's Honda Civic, though he encountered an issue just when he least needed it at the start of his changeover stint. Out on the track, this the cockpit view of RAF Hurricanes driver Cy Barlow in his MG ZE. The RAF are giving debuts here to most of their drivers, including Dave Russell. We've learned to operate in a different way. We've, um, we've had to, to purchase some new equipment to, to allow us to do things in a different way. Um, but yet, despite all of that, we're still able to take part in this event due to the uh, tremendous efforts from various members of our team to, to get us in this position. But it's important that we've done it in a safe manner, which is, which is the only reason why we're here. The Handicap Committee handed the military teams between 34 and 36 credit laps. It's just great to be finally back out and doing it again. It's been uh, two years since I've been out in the car. We've had a great transformation by Keith. Looks, looks great again now, it goes, goes fine. And it seems to be going well today for the Navy. You've, uh, you're, you're certainly keeping the laps going and that's really important, isn't it, in this race? It is, yeah. I don't want to jinx anything at this stage. We're still not quite halfway there yet. But with the Burkett, things can change very quickly. Frantic tyre changing activity in the garage, a sign the teams are preparing for the anticipated wet track. Although the heavy rain left the track soaked, apart from the odd spin, not a single incident involving the need for the safety car took place during the whole race, the general conduct in line with the excellent organisation from the 750 Motor Club. By the end of the six hours, it was as tight as ever between the military teams. RAF Spitfire just managing to beat Army Team 1 in the scratch event and just as close on handicap. But the most important thing, they were racing again. John Knighton, Forces News, Silverstone.